Trouble is brewing in Europe. Though the world cannot see it, a terrifying European superpower now rises. Discover how this superpower is already preparing for another world war, a war that will be stopped only by the second coming of Jesus Christ. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. For over 75 years, we've been prophesying about the last Holy Roman Empire and that there would be ten kings. Ten kings are ten uh, nations or groups of nations. When Jesus Christ comes to this earth, ten kings are rising on the world scene at this very moment when I'm talking to you, and one half of those ten kings have already risen, and they are a sign of Jesus Christ's second coming, so we need to be very much concerned about this. They are going to be destroyed by the second coming of Jesus Christ, and, and, uh, but there's going to be massive destruction before that if this Western world does not repent of their sins and heed God's message that He sends to them. The kings are a sign, a sign of Christ's second coming. The time is very short. Notice Revelation 17 and verse 12. Here's what it says, And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. It's going to be a short time. Verse 13, These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, or Jesus Christ, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. So of those ten kings, five have already risen. I'll show you that today, and I'll tell you this is a major prophecy about the best news that you could ever possibly hear. We need Jesus Christ to return to this earth before all human life is destroyed by nuclear bombs and uh, weapons of mass destruction. But there's just a short time here, and God talks about Christ being the Lord of lords and King of kings. Who are those kings and lords under Him that return with Him, that are chosen, faithful, and uh, called? Who are they? Well, they're the first fruits that are called out before Jesus Christ returns and deliver His message. And if they do that, they're going to be made kings and priests on the throne of David with Jesus Christ Himself. That is something to really ponder. So I think you'd have to say our leaders have forgotten the promises that they had made after World War II. They've just simply not remembered. and. Germany has a long history of starting wars. Then that's not that difficult to prove either. I want to give you a quote here that we have given to you before to show that people have forgotten what they said after World War II, especially the leaders. Notice in a signed document with Franklin Roosevelt after World War II, and here's what they said. It is our inflexible purpose to destroy German militarism and Nazism and to ensure Germany will never again be able to disturb the peace of the world. Now, who talks like that today? Has anybody mentioned that today? Well, I can tell you a time when they did consider that in 1970. They still remembered that very vividly. And I'll give you an example of Franz Joseph Strauss, who uh, was meeting with Herbert W. Armstrong, and he was at that time the strongest politician in all of Europe and very well known by everybody. 
So here's what he said in 1970 when he was with Herbert W. Armstrong, and here's a quote from our news report. The fourth policy would be to face the Soviet challenge. That was when the Soviet Union was a reality, more than today even. This can best be achieved through a united Western Europe, Dr. Strauss feels. To this end, he said that Germany would be willing to completely renounce national sovereignty and to assuage those who fear German militancy. He suggested that if it would help unite Europe, no German be president, prime minister, defense minister, or foreign minister for the rest of this century. Now, how about that? I mean, that, I think, was quite a good attitude, that he, he was willing to do all of that. And if you look, look, if uh, just in a 153 years, if you go back to 1870, Germany attacked France. And then, of course, 1914, they started World War I. And then 1939, they started World War II, where 60 million people died. Ten million died in World War I, and certainly Germany was responsible for that. And it was well over 70 million people that were killed by those three wars. And that's a lot of people to die, and that's a lot of responsibility when you think about, well, how could, uh, what, what, what is it that causes Germany to do that? Well, it's all about the Holy Roman Empire. There are going to be seven heads. There are six of them that have, we've seen already, and the last one is appearing on the scene right now. Let's take a look at uh, what was said in 1970 and, and think about that for a moment, because today, well, look, we've not only uh, uh, had Germany, we've just cozied up to them in a way that you can't believe it, because we've even given them nuclear bombs. Who ever heard of such a thing? To hand the bombs over to somebody that with that history, doesn't that strike you as terribly foolish? And we even sold them the planes, the jet planes, to carry those bombs. Now that is reality. I'm not telling you anything that anybody else shouldn't know. That is reality. So let me show you something here that should be disturbing to everybody, and especially in this Western world, but even the whole world. Even the whole world. Here's a, uh, an article the uh, German Army military said, With the subordination of the Dutch 13th Light Brigade, all brigades of the Dutch Field Army will be subordinated to the divisions of the German Army. Well, how about that? Not only Holland uh, come on the scene with their army, but they're subordinate to the Germans. Well, it, is that disturbing to anybody? It should be. And here's another statement from the, this same German military, the excellent cooperation between the German and Dutch armed forces is regarded as a special example of a close common European security and defense policy. And that's from the German army. Now the entire Dutch land force is now under German command. Now. And then they, they go on to say, well, they, this, this is a special example. What do they mean by that? Well, they mean this is, this is the way they want it done with the other nations if they want to be a member of the wealthy Holy Roman Empire led by Germany. Is that, does that make you feel like maybe Germany is much more aggressive than we want them to be? Well, according to our leaders, at the end of World War II, that would be a big mistake, what they're doing with Holland and, and what, what is happening there. Already you can see Germany and Holland, though those are two of those kings, <laughs> going to produce two of those kings anyhow. 
of the ten kings. Now, how can you read this any other way? Holland's entire land force is now under German command. And they're saying, and that's a special example because we expect everybody else to keep that, follow that example. And this is how the uh, Holy Roman Empire is going to be built. Germany is going to rule over all of those ten nations. And Isaiah 10, verses 5 through 7 tell you that, talking about Assyria, which is the name of ancient Germany. It's right there in your Bible in quite a few places. So, this is what it's going to take if you want to be in the Holy Roman Empire. Now, that's something we should be concerned about. And I, we're doing some, what I believe are some of the most foolish things that uh, a nation could do in their foreign policy. But let's take a look now at France and see what they are doing. And that too should be disturbing. Here's what we wrote in one of our reports French President Emmanuel Macron was in uh, China from April the 6th through the 9th and essentially swore off Europe's alliance to the United States. He noted that Europe should not follow the U.S. policy on Taiwan and instead needs to work on the creation of a third superpower. Wow! They're thinking big about a third superpower. Mr. Armstrong talked about that over 75 years ago. The very same expression. China, in the meantime, has signed major deals with countries around the world to undermine the dollar, a de development Macron supports. Macron was greatly criticized for his comments, but he is just putting words to an existing reality. The German foreign minister is now also on her way to China. Well, what's going on with Germany and China? They're cozying up with China, who has shown a lot of uh, well, enemy action toward the U.S. France is one of the rising ten kings along with Germany at this time, and Holland. And here, here you have a, a, a biblical Reuben, that's the name of ancient France. France is the, really the brother of biblical Israelite Manasseh which happens to be the ancient name of America today, the biblical name of America. Think about when uh, World War II, when we were fighting, we, we sent many Americans into France to save that nation, and I mean many of those soldiers died, and there's a massive cemetery over there of just U.S. soldiers who died saving the nation of France. Certainly, that, our power did the job more than anybody else. But I'll tell you what's going on. France is really the mouthpiece of, for Germany. And I, I think if you'll just think about that a little, you'll uh, understand why. There is a prophecy that says Germany is going to start World War III. It's in your Bible. And uh, so you can see this alliance is uh, disturbing to say the least. Why would uh, France be turning so bitterly against America since we, we fought with them in World War I and World War II against Germany? What is happening there? So you look at uh, those three wars, if you add uh, the attack Germany made against France in, uh, that was in 1870, that's 153 years, and look what Germany has done just in those recent years. Well, I think you can imagine how frightened this world would be if Germany got up and made the statements that 
uh, McCrone just made, surely there's quite a few people who remember Germans' history, Germany's history, and they know about the Holy Roman Empire. All six heads of them have been bloody, bloody wars in Europe and beyond at times. And, and certainly that would alarm a lot of people. That's why Macron in France is the mouthpiece of Germany right now. That won't last too long, but that's the way it is right now. Something to think about. Macron said this, Europeans cannot resolve the crisis in Ukraine. How can we credibly say on Taiwan, watch out? In other words, Macron is just telling the world that they are not going to fight for Taiwan if China attacks. They're just essentially telling them, telling them it's okay, you, you can go ahead and take Taiwan. We, we're not going to do anything. And of course, America still says they support Taiwan. Another break. These are, well, the, uh, our lovers in biblical terms. And God says our lovers are going to really be doing dangerous things in this world, and it will hurt us as well if we don't heed God's warning message. This is, this is reality. You have the history and you have the Bible prophecy where anybody can see what is happening here. And if you uh, want to prove God's existence and prove the Bible's uh, God's own inspired Word, you can do that. We have all kinds of literature that will help you do so. T. H. Tetons noted in Germany plots with the Kremlin. That was just written just a short time, two to three years after World War II. Here's what they said. The Nazis, they are dreaming of building a new third power block and declared that this new power combination would plunge the United States down from its present dizzy heights. Their plan right then was to bring down America from their dizzy heights. And what is their plan now? They made plans even before World War II ended that they were going to rise again, and they were going to remember what America has done to them in two world wars. Their power, the U.S. power, was the real turning point in those two wars. And they think that's, that needs to be dealt with. Edmund Stoiba was a disciple of Franz Joseph Strauss that I mentioned earlier, and he was really into the high tech, and he brought in a lot, just 100,000 jobs into Bavaria by building up that area and uh, doing and getting high tech corporations to come in. Now, that is interesting because there is a man today who's also really into high tech. And he too is interested in ruling over those ten kings, like others are, of course. But he, I think, has a pretty big edge, and uh, he uh, he has a long name. One of his names is Reichsfreier, which means Baron of the Holy Roman Empire. He has an interesting name and a history that. Uh, is quite fascinating to a lot of people. But as far as the high tech is concerned, he was far ahead of Strauss, certainly, and even Stoiba. Notice what he's doing. On March 24, Gutenberg attended another meeting with ATOS, a global leader in digital transformation. He was invited by former Austrian Chancellor Dr. Alfred Gusenbauer a critic of Russia and who has business ties to Russia. Perhaps the most interesting fact is that ATOS is cooperating with the military to prepare Germany for wars of the future. They're there. They're thinking about wars already. Well, I don't think I need to get into any more of that, but uh, they're even uh, working on 
like sending out 12 large drones or 50 small ones, just, just by high tech and without men in them, but they could certainly put nuclear bombs or uh, a biological kind of warfare in those drones. And this is what we're looking at today. You need to read a verse in Ezekiel 7 and verse 14 about they have blown the trumpet even to make ready, but none goes to the battle. It's, isn't that uh, talking about digital warfare or, or artificial uh, intelligence? That's what this is all about. Well, I have to hurry along here to make sure I get all of these in, but uh, in artificial intelligence, even Elon Musk says, uh, could very well destroy this whole civilization because they don't really understand it. It's so complicated. Taking a hundred computers and putting them together and, and seeing what you can do with them. Well, the human mind, you, people don't even understand the human mind. How can they understand something like that? Be, we ought to be getting some help from God. But here you have Austria, these two uh, Austrian uh, chancellors that Mr. Gutenberg knows very well and was close to the, the one just before this present chancellor, very close. And of course, you know about Otto von Habsburg, how much he has worked. He, he's now uh, no longer living, but he spent his life practically in the last few years dedicated to helping the Holy Roman Empire rise on this earth. He thought it was essential for world peace. But it, it's going to be a lot, it, it's going to disturb the world's peace, just like it, uh, Germany did anciently. So, I'll just give you one more here. Uh, here's, you know about Georgia Maloney. She is the uh, leader uh, of uh, Italy at this time, and she was the leader of the successor party to Benito Mussolini, fascist after all. So how about that? that they're, they're, she, she ran on the, the party of Mussolini, who was allied with Germany in World War II, of the sixth head of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, she's very much interested in developing and reviving the Holy Roman Empire. She's already in that Holy Roman Empire. That is the way she's living. What is going to happen? Is it going to be hijacked by a strong man in Europe? You better read Daniel 8 and verse 23, because we need to be heeding the message of God today. These are terrible times we're living in, and yet God just gives us all kinds of good news and tells us how, look, if you'll bring me into this, your reasoning, I'll show you how you can solve your problems. That's something we ought to really take note of. I wrote this long ago, the rise of Maloney's movement matches exactly with what the Bible foretold. These prophecies warn that we need to be watching for the rise of this power. And I wrote an article on Fascism Reawakens in Italy, and we'll send you a copy of that if you'd like to have it. It goes on here to talk about that, but I don't have time to get into these things, and just would like to remind you of how important these prophecies are, and they're being fulfilled before our eyes today. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Daniel Unlocks Revelation, He Was Right, Fascism Reawakens in Italy, and America's Achilles Heel. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.